Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today's video will be a trade demonstration video. I'm gonna close the Twitter position and open up two new positions for you guys to check out. I just wanted to provide a couple of quick updates. The channel's slowly growing, which I think is super awesome. I'm almost at 60 subscribers and I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm so happy that you are here. Please continue to like, leave a comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with your friends who don't trade options, any of the above. I just wanna let you guys know that I appreciate you all very much. A couple of you have reached out to me after my last trade video about volatility and I was able to provide some really helpful resources for those people who reached out. So thank you for asking questions. As I've said before, I'd wanna be helpful for you. So if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments and I wanna be able to answer them. I also want to put on trades that you guys want to see. So if there's anything specific that you have been thinking about, you have a question about how to set up a trade, you want to see something new done, please let me know that as well. I don't want to just sell only put credit spreads on the entirety of this channel. That would be really boring and I'm sure I would lose a lot of subscribers that way. So let me know what you want to see traded. Uh, there's going to be a new trade set up in this video, which I hope you find really helpful and I'll walk through some of my thought process in how I set that trade up. And as always, thanks so much for watching. It looks like the position in Twitter is doing very well, so I'm gonna try to close this today. As I've demonstrated before, when I wanna close positions as is, I'll just click the close position rather than close for profit. Bids and the ass are pretty tight right now. I'm going to go down to 37 and lock this in for the day and see what happens. If this trade is filled at 37 cents, then it'll increase the buying power by 262.71. The realized profit will be $64. If you recall from a few weeks ago, I collected about $101 in credit. So this is over 50% profit on this one, which is awesome. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let this one rest and see if it gets filled as is. I wanted to walk you guys through what I've done in the account. So it's about one month since I last deposited money. And so I wanted to show you guys sort of the account activity. The first deposit that I put in was in March. The second deposit was April 21st of $250. And then I just deposited another 250 earlier this week so that by the time this video comes out, it'll have been um, exactly a month of the, since the last deposit. So currently, the account has $1,194 in cash. The current buying power is $894.88. Uh, assuming Twitter gets filled today, then this buying power will increase. <clears throat> <clears throat> so let's take a look at the charts. The market is up today. I don't really have a lot to say about why the market is acting the way it is and what I think is going to happen. I honestly have no idea. It feels a little weird that we're recovering so quickly considering how fast this downturn happened and we're, you know, almost touching 3000 in SPX. It'll probably be, you know, assuming things go continue to move in this trend direction, it will be just a matter of days before we get back to 3,000. Um, but then again, the market could take another couple down days. So we'll see. It, it's it's a little weird to me at this point, considering the world and what's happening. But I'm not going to fight it. So I just wanted to just wanted to quickly just go over that with you guys. Just wow, that looks pretty crazy. So the market is up today. I don't typically like to sell puts on up days. But, you know, exceptions can be made if you can find good stocks with high IV rank. And there are plenty. I don't really know that much about these. So I'm going to um, continue to investigate uh, a good trade opportunity and um, maybe open up another put spread. But I want to give you guys a demonstration in a different type of trade. So I think today I'm going to do what is called a call debit spread. This works um, when the market is trending upwards. Instead of buying an outright call, this is a similar setup to a put credit spread, except instead of collecting credit up front, you are going to pay a premium up front in hopes that if the trade moves in the direction that you want, you will 
be able to close it out for a profit. So it's like buying a call, but there is a maximum profit that you can obtain through the trade setup. So I'll walk you guys through that today just so that you have an idea of something else besides put credit spreads because there are plenty of options strategies that you can undertake if you are an options trader and I want to give you guys the benefit of seeing something new. So since the market's going up, I like to trade in SPY as do many other traders. I'm going to open up a debit spread in SPY. So debit spread in SPY, let's take a look at the volatility and see if it's worth it. If you're opening up a call debit spread, you want your goal is to try to open these positions in stocks or ETFs that have low volatility. And so right now, as I stated in my last video, uh, volatility tends to decrease as markets trend upwards. So um, selling options is good in high volatility environments, buying options is better in lower volatility environment. So this is an ideal trade setup for a call debit spread. So this is the options chain. And in the last trade demonstration videos, I had been focusing on this side of the chain, which is a representation of the puts. For today's video, I'm going to focus on the left side of the chain, which is the calls. So as you can see, if this was the put side, this all of these positions right here are in the money, but this is the call side and all the positions over here are in the money. One other thing about selling call debit spreads is that you don't necessarily need to sell them in a 30 to 60 day environment. Sometimes they do better if they are longer dated, such as 60 to 90 days. This gives you more time for the stock to move in the direction that you want. And because I want to put on a variety of different trades, I'm going to focus on the 60 day range. And right now the July 17th expiration is 58 days away. The next one after that is August 21st. That's a little bit too far out for my preference, so I'm going to go with July 17th. And as you can see, SPY continues to increase a little bit. So let's try a call debit spread at 300. If we were going to buy this call, it would cost $920. And I don't want to spend $920 on anything, so I'm going to sell a call at 301. So in a similar setup as a put credit spread if you buy a call and then sell a call you are limiting the amount of money that you're going to pay up front but it will cap the maximum amount of money that you can earn if the trade is successful what i mean by that is i will only be able to earn 44 dollars off of this trade if spy moves completely through both of these legs this is closer to the at the money and so you could benefit if you want to just put out a little bit more to potentially make about half. If you want to spend less money, you just move upwards. And just notice because this is 58 days away, these options are a little bit more expensive if you're going to try to buy them. If you were going to move earlier in time, of course, they'd be less expensive, but then that's only 41 days away. All right, so examining these prices, I think I want to ensure a greater probability of success. So I'm going to bring it down to 303 and 304. I'm going to spend $50 on the hope that SPY continues to move in the upward direction so that I can make $50 off of this trade. So in reviewing this, the maximum amount of money I can make is $50. So the width of these strikes is $1 wide. I will pay $50 to open the debit spread, but assuming SPY moves completely through both of these legs and enough time passes, I can sell it back for $100, which means I would make a $50 profit. If I do this, I'm reducing the buying power by $52.30, which is good because this is a small account. So this is a test demonstration. I don't sell call debit spreads very often as I prefer to sell put spreads instead, but it's worth giving a shot, especially in light of the current market conditions. And worst case scenario, if the call doesn't work out in our favor, the most that we could have lost is $52.30 instead of $950 or whatever the premium was for just buying a call outright. If you guys have any questions about call debit spreads, please let me know. It's possible I might have missed some really important factors in how to set these trades up, as this is the first time I'm demonstrating it on this channel.
and going back to the probabilities, unlike our previous setups where we had, ooh, you see that Twitter just got filled in the background. That's cool. Um, but going back to the probabilities, uh, this is a 42% probability of profit on the call debit side. You can take that for what it's worth. I try not to look at these too often, especially because I don't want to get hung up on, you know, whether or not buying something is going to work out in my favor. Expiration is 58 days away. We're going to spend $50 to try to make $50. We'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to let that one work. I don't want to force this. I don't want to pay more than I necessarily need to. But in the meantime, we'll go ahead and look at the activity. So Twitter was filled at 37 cents, 29 cents in fees, so minus 37.29. Buying power is back to $1,107.58. Total cash balance, $1,157, because this is factoring in the fact that I will potentially be spending $50 to open this call debit spread. Okay, so let's just enter the Twitter trade in the Tiffany Trades Options Trade Journal. Today's the 20th, minus 37.29. Wow, so that was a pretty long trade to hold. That was about three weeks. It's a little bit longer than some of our more recent trades, but patience pays off. So after accounting for fees, this trade netted $61.42. And since the inception of this account, I have collected a total of $157.64 in credit and saved $1,000 in trading funds. So this is still working. And because I'm gonna be spending $50 to try to make $50, I thought it would be a good idea to also try to put on a put credit spread to sort of balance out the spend credit scenario. So let's just take a look at the grid. Uh, the ETFs are sorted by IV rank. IWM is 53% right now, which is pretty good. High options volume is another tab that I like to play around in. IV rank showing some stocks that have pretty high IV. Uh, looks like Zoom has earnings coming up in 13 days. Definitely going to try to stay away from Macy's and retail sector. Bob is another stock that I like to trade in, but their earnings are, looks like tomorrow. Let's check that out. Uh, okay, so E-Trade says their earnings are on the 22nd. I usually find this information to be a little bit more accurate than Tasty Trade sometimes lags a little bit behind in their earnings. Um, calendar so I often double check both just to make sure that I'm have the right information let's explore an earnings play in Alibaba Alibaba has a 52% IV rank right now which makes selling premium ideal it's a highly traded option it's very liquid so they did have a little bit of a downturn but it doesn't look like it was nearly as steep as some other stocks including the index ETFs they are currently in the overbought territory. Good, a little closer. So you can see since the start of 2020, the high has been about 230. The low is about 180. And this was, again, this was the low um, in March following the pandemic downturn. But it looks like for the most part, it spent more time above the 200 range. So maybe a very conservative put credit spread is in order. Uh, the expirations 30 to 60 days away, we would be focusing on June 19th, June 26th, or July 17th. If we explore July 17th, in the event that Alibaba takes a downturn following its earnings reports, Having a longer dated trade will give us more time for the stock to recover. And it looks like the expected move isn't that great between now and July 17th. Tasty Trade is sort of predicting that the stock is only going to move maybe about $15 in either direction. But again, these are just probabilities. This is not guaranteed. There's no saying what exactly is going to happen. 
it's very possible that Alibaba can move up to 250 or it can even blow down past the 200. But these are just a useful metric to look at if you are putting on a credit spread and you want to kind of get an idea of how uh, risky or conservative your trade is. So Alibaba is trading around 220 right now. Let's explore 210, 205. So if we sold a put at 210 and bought a put at 205, the total credit collected would be $168. This is a little bit more than one third of the width of the strike, which is 500. If we put on this trade, it would reduce our buying power by 334.30. The maximum we can make is 168. Again, this is a $5 wide strike. This is still a pretty small account. Let's just quickly look at the weekly and see if we can get something a little bit smaller. So we'll go back in time. As you can see, the weeklies have uh, varying strike prices, which makes putting on spreads with a more narrow wings easier and um, better for smaller accounts. So let's explore that. So if we did 210, 207.50, you'd collect about $93. And that is more than one third of the width of the strike. As you can see here, this is a little bit wider of an expected move. If you want it to be more conservative, you can move down. Increasing your probability of success the further away from the money that you move, but you're collecting less credit. It's possible that this might not get filled today. These look like they're a little bit illiquid. Not a lot of volume. You can see on this side there's the volume indicator. These are pretty wide bids and asks. Let's see what's going on in June, on June 19th. All right, so as June 19th gets closer, these options are less expensive, which means you'll be collecting less credit up front, but you have less time to get to expiration. Expected move between now and June 19th is a little bit wider. You have less time for the stock to recover if it moves against you, but you can still collect a pretty decent amount of credit if you work in the monthly expiration. So if we put on this trade, you have a 61% probability of profit. You're collecting a little bit more than one third of the credit. It's only a three cent difference if you move down one strike and you increase your probability of profit by 4%. The further down you move, the more likely you are to succeed in this trade, the less credit you'll collect. So I'm gonna to try to put this on then. These bids and asks are a little bit tighter. This might work out in our favor. Let's see what happens. If you put on this trade, the maximum profit would be $91. The buying power reduction is 161.30. 250 wide strike minus $91 means that the most you could lose from this trade is 159. All right, so both of these are still working. It's possible that they get filled today and it's possible that they don't, that they don't. but in either scenario, I will uh, provide you an update. I'm back, I took a break, went to go do some work, and as you can see, both of the orders have been filled, but I want to point something out that is really interesting. So when we were looking at BABA earlier, it was trading around 220 and then it was filled while we were waiting for the spider position to get filled and now baba is trading around 212 which is a sudden downturn from earlier today and the reason i wanted to point it out is i'm not gonna panic right now and do anything with this position just because i just put it on today and i am going to try to figure out what is happening with alibaba and why it just all of a sudden started to tank it's a little bit unfortunate that now you know I could have sold this for $120 instead of 91, but it is what it is. Um, it's possible that you know whatever news is causing this to happen in the stock right now might just blow over and it'll go, it'll increase tomorrow. So we'll just wait and see about that. It's it's kind of interesting. These are, these things happen in the stock market pretty regularly, so just treat this as a lesson learned to pay a little bit better of attention. Um, you know, Baba's earnings are in a day or two anyway, so it's not surprising that it's sort of taking these wide swings. There are 30 days until this uh, 
trade expires. So I'm not going to worry about it at this point. And, you know, if needed and after earnings, if I have to, I will roll this trade and potentially widen the strikes. We'll see. I might try to put on a different trade to make up for the possible loss. We'll see. You know, again, it's nothing is certain right now. This just went on today. This is news reacts. The market reacts very quickly to news, so I'm not going to panic. But I wanted to just point that out to you guys just to let you guys know to keep an eye on it with me. Um, SPY was filled at 50 cents. So less fees, it'll be $52.30. We'll go ahead and enter this in. And we'll keep track of these trades over here. I'm keeping these earlier trades on for now just to sort of see how I had done previously. This is a, another way to you can journal your trades just to kind of check on your past history and progress. So with that said, this is going to be the wrap up of the video. I'm going to keep an eye on these trades. I will be posting status updates to my Instagram account. So if you want to stay up to date and follow along with how the trades are doing before I close them in the next trade demonstration video, please check me out on Instagram at Tiffany Trades Options. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you found value in this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. I would really appreciate it if you could share this with any other traders who might find this helpful. I know a lot of content on YouTube is sort of geared towards day trading and, um, you know, rapid succession trades and, you know, a little bit more aggressive than, than the ordinary person might enjoy. So it really helps me out if you share this material with people who might find it valuable as well. And again, I appreciate you so much. So thank you so much for watching and I'll check in with you guys later.